Ugh, alright. <clears throat> Let's do this. <clears throat> Give me that cure! What's up guys, Jared here with another shot straight to the arm of a movie review. So there was a time a few years ago where Hunger Games was the hot new jam and every studio was mining YA novels to find their next big franchise. And 20th Century Fox thought that they found their franchise with Maze Runner. The first Maze Runner was fun and enjoyable. The Scorch Trials was alright, but kind of missed the mark. And now we're on the third and final film, Maze Runner The Death Cure. So does The Death Cure heal this dying franchise? Let's find out. So Maze Runner The Death Cure picks up after the events of the Scorch Trials. Thomas, Newt, Frypan, and some of the other resistance fighters are using guerrilla techniques to round up some of the immune kids that were captured by Wicked. Their main goal is to find their missing friend and fellow Glader, Minyo, who was captured by Wicked and tested on and tortured to find this so-called Death Cure. As the resistance finds out that Minyo, along with some of the others, are being held in the last city, they meet up with some of the other freedom fighters to plan a rescue mission. As all hell breaks loose, the Gladers risk their lives avoiding Wicked, the infected humans known as Cranks, and pretty much everything else in the process of escaping and finding salvation. So I thought Maze Runner The Death Cure was a pretty decent action movie. Unfortunately, Dylan O'Brien's accident on the set kind of delayed this movie, and therefore makes it too little too late. I don't think the audience is clamoring for this sequel unless you're one of those die-hard Maze Runner fans. Now I will give it to this movie, the action was some of the most fun I've seen in a while. Explosions, gunfights, car chases, pretty much all of the ingredients you need to make a high-octane action film. From the opening five minutes, you are thrust into this new movie with this awesome train heist. It had elements of Mad Max mixed with Fast and Furious with a little bit of hint of Breaking Bad, and it was 100% popcorn flick material. I couldn't help but smile and enjoy this wild opening, and then the title screen slams in, and I'm like, oh, f I am so ready for this. Aside from the opening five minutes, exciting action stuff is peppered in throughout the movie. Another thing that really got me was the mythology of this Maze Runner universe. Like I mentioned earlier, it has hints of Mad Max, but there's so much more to dive into. Like what causes this strange illness called the Flare? Who is wicked? What is the last city? How is daily life in the last city? What exactly happens to you when you turn into a crank? Side note, the cranks really sounded like the clickers from The Last of Us. <laughs> Anyways, this falls into the same arena as the Hunger Games, but I feel like the source material in this one is a lot more interesting than some of the other YA novels. However, with all of this cool stuff to back it up, the movie was constructed fairly poorly, and there's a lot of plot holes and plot points that seemingly come out of nowhere, and they're sort of confusing. Things sort of form here to there, and some characters are introduced just for the sake of being introduced. For example, Walter Goggins' character is kind of just thrown in here, along with another character that really redcons some of the previous films. Thinking back on it now, Maze Runner The Death Cure was a really messy film, and if you haven't seen the previous two, you will be thoroughly confused. Characters and performances were pretty one-dimensional and pretty dry in this one as well. O'Brien's Thomas had a lot of character development and depth in the previous films, but in this one, he's just this adrenaline fueled guy looking for revenge. There isn't much emotional connection, and he's just kind of there. Also, Teresa, played by Kaya Solorado, is just bad. She was supposed to have this loving connection with Thomas's character, but I didn't buy it at all. She was deadpan for most of this, and any sort of redemption that she had was like, eh, I don't care. Lastly, this movie was just way too long. Clocking in at 142 minutes, even I was checking my watch as this movie dragged on. This is taking a while. How much time is left? There's still 30 minutes? Just tighten things up a bit and don't give every character a 5 minute redemption or ending vignette. It honestly felt like Lord of the Rings with all of the different endings and we just needed one. Ah, that's the credits. Time to go- What? Wait, wait a minute. There's more? What the heck? Overall, Maze Runner The Death Cure is a decent end cap to the Maze Runner trilogy that was too little too late. With awesome action sequences and interesting mythology, but with messy plot points, boring characters, and the movie being a bit too long, I'd recommend checking out Maze Runner The Death Cure if you've seen the previous two and really enjoyed them. If not, you won't have a damn clue what's happening. What did you think of Maze Runner The Death Cure? Was it the dystopian end cap to the Maze Maze Runner trilogy you were hoping for? Or did this movie limp across the finish line? I want to hear about it in the comments below. As always, you can find me on the social medias at Jared Buckendall on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>